we will listen to the last presentation of the uh, morning. The presenter is Tahi Chong, a researcher at Seoul Museum of History. She majored in uh, ancient uh, history of arts from Seoul National University and uh, she wrote her master's paper on uh, Kasa Teng, which is a drawing of Kasa. So the presentation is titled uh, From Embroidery to Painting Imperial Noble Concert Om um, and the Kasa Painting at Hangnim Am. Um. The presentation will have two uh, Kasa Tengs analyzed. First is the Kasa Teng at Hangnim Am, and uh, sometimes the same term is uh, used to refer to the genre. The presentation seeks to reveal the intentions of Lady Om, um, the consort of Kojong, when she commissioned Kasa Teng at Hangnim Am. It was produced at Suraksan Hangnim Am in 1902 and is enshrined in Cheongyongsa Jongnogu Seoul. It is a painting where Kasa, the robe of monks, is reproduced in real life size. It is special in that the theme of the painting is Kasa, and it is a painting that replicates a real object. The normally Buddhist paintings show iconography of text and uh, virtual books, but Kasa Teng's icon is a real Kasa clothing that is embroidered. But Kasa Teng is a painting, so obviously it cannot function as a clothing. In previous literature, uh, they infer that, like other Buddhist paintings in late Joseon dynasty, Kasa Teng was made to use uh, at rituals. But according to records, as Kasa Ishipa Teng made in Kungguksa in 1883, uh, and Kasa Teng made in Hangnim Am 1902. These two are the only Kasa Tengs in record, so it is unlikely that rituals used Kasa Teng was popularized, and they probably were not uh, used to be used at rituals. Rather, they were offerings commissioned by devotees. As records show, there are two Kasa Tengs, and there is the Kasa Ya that became the model replicated in the Kasa Tengs. They were all commissioned by women. So it shows that embroidery was mostly produced and commissioned by women. The Western academia recently is focusing on how lay women of the Ming and Qing dynasties use media such as Buddhist painting, embroidery, accessories, and pictures to make Buddhist art a window of self-expression. A prime example is how Queen Sichi of the late Qing dynasty portrayed herself as Avalokitesvara in pictures and paintings to showcase both her faith and political status at the same time. Such research is referenced when looking into the commission of Kasa Teng, where female commissioner and the medium of embroidery are key uh, factors. First, we will look at how Kasaya, that was a expensive offering of female devotee, has been replaced with a painting of Kasaya. Uh, and also, Lady Om commissioned Kasating in 1902 in order to visualize her status and uh, her femininity. In fact, only record on Hwasa Teng is the inscription on the Buddhist painting, but it does not identify the patron. Only, it features a prayer for the well-being of Ko Jong, who was recorded as the emperor, the crown prince, and later the crown princess, Ko Jong's consort, Sun Bi Um, and Um's son, Yong Chin, king. However, in her 2014 paper, uh, Yu Kyung Hee first attributes the origin of Hwasa Teng to Lady Um. She uh, says that she is only recorded in the prayer text, such as in the paintings at Hunguksa, Suguksa, and Purmusa. But in fact, they were all commissioned by Lady Om. Um. Usually, uh, after becoming Empress Dowager, uh, Om mainly conducted affairs through her Sangong and subjects and revealed her existence in prayer texts. Therefore, it was assumed that Om um was likely the commissioner of Kasa Teng. Also, considering the timing of Hangnim Am Buddhist projects and the records of the people uh, mentioned 
in the inscription, uh, it all points to the fact that the commissioner was Lady Om. The Buddhist affairs at Hangimam ended on July 24th lunar year, the same year in which Buddhist affairs at Hengguksa ended on July 25th. Uh, July 25th was the birthday of Kojong, so Lady Um finished the projects to celebrate uh, Manso Songjol, which was the birthday of Kojong. Also, the great uh, patron of Kasa Teng, who was Shinya Pyeongwoseng Chongshi Chong Chonghua, uh, she was a figure who had close ties to Sanggung's through Buddhist affairs. Uh, this is evidenced by the fact that Chong's name is recorded alongside the Sanggung's in the uh, painting of Ten Kings of Hell, a collection at the Chongnyansa Temple. It is believed that Lady Om um might have gotten to know Chong through the Sanggung's. It is also worth noting that Eungjak is the first name mentioned in the list of painter monks in the Bongunsa Kwebul in 1901 and Kasateng in 1902. It is likely that he served as the head painter monk for Buddhist projects commissioned by Lady Om and oversaw the entire production. In addition to Eungjak, the other Buddhist monks featured in Kasate inscription are Chegyam Jonghyun Bongbob, Yungam Kungbob, and they also participated in Buddhist projects commissioned by Om before 1902. As such, it is uh, it can be inferred that Om entrusted the production of Kasate to the monks she had previously worked with. Hangnimam Kasateng is a Buddhist painting that reproduces 25 uh, column embroidered kasa. Uh, cho, or the column, is the vertical cloth attached to kasa, uh, showing the grade and size of kasa. And 25th is the highest rank or grade. In addition to its red background color, the size of Kasateng, uh, 111 centimeters long and 232 centimeters wide, is similar to the actual Hong Kasa, uh, which was the model. The white dotted lines uh, across the borders are reminiscent of sewing stitches. Uh, Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Sutras, DTs are depicted in the 125 compartments and their names are written in gold in the margins, flanking the Compartments are the four heavenly kings, and uh, below we can see the inscription. The uh, kasa that influenced the kasa teng are uh, many, including Sambomyong kasa and kasa ya. The Sambomyong kasa shows the three treasures of um, Buddhism, which is the uh, Buddha, Bodhisattva, Sutra, and Deities. And in the Kasaya in SMCS collection, uh, according to the collector, it is it was commissioned by Mujasen Kumyong Park and under the Kojung of Hebung. Hebung is assumed to be the head monk of Sonamsa. Kasaya has the triatna tri ratna images embroidered, and the composition and position is almost identical to the Sambomyong Kasa. The uh, Kunmyeon Park was the commissioner, and according to the advising of Hebung, she referred to the composition of Sambomyeon Kasa to create the Kasaya. Uh, Hangnimam Kasa Teng's iconography is almost the same as that of Triratna in Kasaya. Kasaya Yishi Pateng, which was enshrined in 1883 at Hunguksa Temple, may have influenced the iconography of Kasateng as well. Produced at Hunguksa, commissioned by Sanggong Shin, it is the first Kasateng to appear on the records. Eung Seok was also responsible for uh, the design and production of Kas um, Kasa Pateng. It reproduced the 21 column Kasa. So we can look at the extant draft of this 21 Cho Kasa Teng to speculate on the form of Kasa Ishipa Teng. So probably the painter monks refer to this Kasa Ishipa Teng for the iconography as Hanguksa uh, is geographically next to Hangnim Am. So they uh, worked with Eunggak Yunsam Sangkyu and had the opportunity to encounter Kasa Ishipa Teng. Also, it is uh, worth noting that Eungseok was 
uh, the one who designed Casa Ishik Pating and also produced the draft of the Buddhist uh, painting in Hangnim Am. So Hangnim Am was a place where drafts were kept or handed over to other painter monks. As such, the draft of Casa Teng that Eung Seok designed reached Lady Om, where uh, through Hwayeon or Hangnim Am, where it was stored and became one of uh, Lady Om's options when she decided to um, conduct the project of creating a Casa Teng. Casa Teng is a type of Buddhist painting uh, that first appears in late 19th century. It's a visual replacement of real Gasaya. And there are no records of the origin of Casa Teng. But what Tan Chongjang Park Chongja said about the origin or the production of Kumni Casa Tenghua gives us some hints. Park Chongja was a master who inherited the painting lineage of Sangyu, who uh, was one of the monks that made Casa Teng. And Park commented on Kumni Casa Tenghua that was submitted to the 1985 craft competition as follows. I will not read out the text. But he explains that when he uh, created the Casa Tank, he covers his mouth with a white cloth and solemnly devotes himself to it. Therefore, uh, he who inherits the lineage of Sangkyu uh, not only acquired the iconography of Casa Tank, but also the context in which it is produced and used. Through his testimony, you can see that Casa Teng has replaced not only the visual form of actual Casa, but also the function of merit gained by creating the Casa. The replacement of Kasaya with paintings of it is a result of a combination of factors, including royal women's tradition of commissioning embroidery, the lack of court embroiderers, and the trend of general painting seen in the late Joseon. Royal women in Joseon were active commissioners of Buddhist embroidery that, as high-end offerings that required skilled labor and expensive materials. The queen, consort, and sangung supplied Buddhist embroidery to temples, including embroidered covers of Buddhist statues, ceremonial robes, tablecloths, and threads. Uh, Buddhist embroidery was not only uh, visually lavish due to the luster of the silk threads, but evokes the time and labor that uh, went into embroidering. Needle women in the court Skilled in embroidery were responsible for the actual production of Buddhist embroidery of royal commissioning. However, the uh, lack of availability of embroider laborers uh, seems to have been what pushed the development of kasating instead of embroidery. Uh, the two Casa Tengs were commissioned at a time where, when there was a dearth of embroiderers. Uh, 1902 was when Casa Teng was produced. Nine, 1883 was when Casa Ishipa was produced. The commissioners, Sun Bi Om and Sang Gong Shin, were women of status and wealth, so they could afford embroidery. However, the two years of production uh, were years when a lot of embroiderers had to uh, be committed to production of embroidered folding screens and clothing for banquets. In 1883, the year Kasai Shipateng was produced, uh, was when embroidered folding screens were produced as diplomatic gifts for Westerners, starting with the U.S. in 1882. Uh, Joseon started establishing ties with Western countries and embroidered folding screens were adopted by Kojong as gifts to Westerners. These are some uh, Westerner diplomats who have received embroidered folding screens as gifts. Uh, from early to mid 1880s, the needle workers of Subang had to intensively produce these folding screens. Similarly, in 1902 was the year when uh, imperial banquets were held. Uh, which required intense embroider labors. Uh, one was held, a banquet was held in April to celebrate Kojong's entrance into Kiroso and another in November for his 40th anniversary on the throne. Significant amount of new clothing must have been required, especially in 1902, in July, 
It was when they started to prepare for the November banquet. So most of the needle workers uh, started to um, make clothing for the banquets. Therefore, uh, there was a lack of needle workers, and that is probably why they commissioned Kasateng to replace it, actual real life embroidery. Another uh, factor was the in the overall painting scene trends in the late Joseon dynasty because it is not, uh, not easy to immediately come up with the idea of replacing kasa with paintings. Previously, royal courts produced painted subon, uh, reproducing patterns and colors of garments, but they were merely sketches for embroidery, not uh, standalone paintings in uh, and of itself. Interestingly, in the late Joseon dynasty, patterns of leopard skins were reproduced in Pyopido. Uh, this is similar to the phenomenon that occurred in eight, 19th century when garments uh, were reproduced as paintings to be enshrined at the halls. Realistically, reproducing pattern of leopard skin probably fulfilled the desire to own uh, one and allowed uh, owners to admire the actual leopard skin. Although Kasateng was a painting, it replaced the image and function of an actual embroidery. It is also noteworthy that uh, in late Joseon dynasty paintings uh, that reproduce expensive objects such as Chekori and Baekseondo became increasingly popular. So the royal women and uh, painter monks referred to such trends to uh, think of the idea of replacing kasa with paintings of it. Also, royal women were exposed to a variety of paintings in the palace, and painters also incorporated motifs into the Buddhist paintings, such as the motif of Chekkori bookshelf in the kasa tank of Hangrimam. So, Kasa Teng not only was functional but also incorporated trends and motives of the time. Uh, it's a re result of the combination of socioeconomic conditions at courts uh, surrounding the production of Buddhist embroidery and the painting conventions of the time. So, what was the intention of uh, Lady Om for commissioning Kasa Teng? Well, 1902 was the year when Lady Om's ambition to rise in terms of royal ranks was most pronounced. In 1896, she was a, uh, in 1897, she was a still Sangung, but uh, her political acumen uh, led to a successful Agwan Pachon, and she was promoted in 1897. She became queen. Uh, she, in 1900, Sunbin, in, in 1901, Sunbi. And her promotion was backed by an organized and constant campaign of appeals. Uh, starting from 19, 1899, uh, Sunbi Om encouraged her supporters, Yun Yongsun and Cho to submit imperial appeals demanding that she be crowned empress. Her objective was to solidify her and her son Yong Chin's political position. Uh, after being ranked Sunbi in 1901, uh, she technically became the highest ranked woman in imperial uh, royal court since the death of Empress Myeongseong, Hwang Hu. Uh, however, she was not satisfied and encouraged an active campaign to promote her. 1902, uh, when Kasateng was made, was the year when uh, there was the most number of appeals for her promotion. Hundreds of officials and scholars submitted named petitions forming a collective movement to elevate her. And in 1903, she rises to the unprecedented rank of imperial dowager. Uh, given such background of 1902, uh, Kasateng could be seen as the visualization of Om's political ambition to become empress and her actual status uh, uh, at the time. The theme of embroidered kasa can be interpreted as a female virtue of Om as a wine woman. And the theme of 25 column kasa shows her status and desire to go higher. Uh, embroidery was an opportunity to 
showcase the noble woman's womanly virtues and the late Joseon dynasty. They made such pocket handbooks uh, with the virtues and it was read by the noble men. And the ideal uh, woman was the virtuous and chaste women and these were some uh, virtues that were written in the appeals to promote uh, Om to Empress and she probably decided that the theme of embroidered kasa was appropriate to portray herself as an Empress material. Uh, unlike in 1883 when Kasa Ishpateng was made, Kasa Teng reproduced a 25 column kasa instead of 21, symbolizing a higher um, rank. Among the 21 cho, 23 cho, and 25 cho, 25 cho is the, of the highest grade. So instead of the 21 cho kasa, uh, she portrayed a 25 column kasa in the kasa tank to demonstrate herself as the highest ranked woman in Imperial Joseon. Against such backdrop, kasa tank was a more efficient way for her to demonstrate her vir womanly virtues as an empress material and political ambition. Also, while Kasaya was worn uh, only temporarily uh, during rituals by monks, Kasa Teng was forever enshrined on the wall of the hall so it could easily convey the power of Um. So she maximized the strengths of two different media uh, showing herself as wise and virtuous woman, but also as the highest ranked woman in Korea to the viewers, effectively. I have highlighted the case of Hang Imam Kasa Teng made in 1902, where uh, both the gender factor and the medium of arts uh, plays in, in the Buddhist art history. To that end, I confirmed on as the commissioner of Kasa Teng and highlighted on the painting's nature as an offering that projects the wishes of a female patron and as a painting based on Kasaya, uh, Kasa Teng visualizes Om's political ambition and this 25 column Kasaya reproduction encapsulates Om's virtues and high status. Kasa Teng also shows Om's high level of understanding of the two different media, embroidery and painting, and how she uh, projected her voice through th these windows. Thank you.